This so conference will now be recorded. Okay, sorry, Marty. Um, so obviously why it's important, um, if you're an employer, or a supervisor, a manager, um, 2 million lost work days in the US annually, that's from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Um, employees can lose productivity, um, insurance payments can be higher, things to that. Um, there was a study done by the CDCP. Um, they did a three month, in a three month period in this study, um, people with depression, mental illness, they missed the average of 4.8 work days and they suffered 11.5 um, days compared to others who was significantly less. Um, causes, this can be a big issue. We know with it, it's common. And so disability, absenteeism, people can be late. Um, this can cause issues in the workplace because if you don't, if people around you, if you're suffering from mental illness or depression or whatever it might be, people around you might not see what you are going through. They might see how your behaviors are. And those behaviors could be missing deadlines, um, late to work, um, frequently forgetting instruction or forgetting tasks that they're supposed to be doing during the week. Um, or if there's a change in department head or a change in um, tasks or skills or whatever it might be, but they might not handle that change very well. But coming off to the outside, that might not look like depression. That might just come off as not doing your job, which can create issues. So we don't want that to simmer, right? We wanna recognize these early warning signs so we can intervene and help early. So don't wanna let it snowball for sure. So early intervention, that's what we're really gonna talk about today is recognizing the signs and symptoms in the beginning. So nothing today, right? We're not trying to diagnose our coworkers or anybody with mental illness or depression, but we're here to just learn about it so we can be more aware voice concern, um, share resources, things to that matter. So these are big ones, but we're gonna look for. Um, so increasing frequency of sick days. And so of course, everybody has things going on in their personal life. So as I talk today, make sure that you keep in mind, you know, where's your comfort zone? What are you comfortable talking to with a coworker? You know, you wanna keep them in a safe place, you in a safe place, we don't wanna you know, reach too far or intrude. So keep those boundaries um, in line, which of course we're talking about work. Um, so know the chain of command, right? When do we involve a supervisor? When do we involve HR? Things like that. But increasing frequency of sick days, and that might come off as more, um, they're refusing to talk about it or share. If you have worked with your coworkers for a long time, right, you guys might be comfortable and be able to say, I'm going to a dentist appointment, I'm going to this. But total privacy um, might be something serious going on which that doesn't mean we have to pry, but it could just be, right, something might be going on. Um, big loss of motivation, and that comes off as slow work, um, disinterest in work, all kinds of things, just missing, I go back to missing deadlines or taking longer on a project than they usually take on projects. Um, that can show up in many different ways, for sure. But any changes in the social behavior at work, these are any, any change in behavior, sudden change in behavior is worth talking about. So whether that's a change in behavior down to depressed, quiet, reserved, or if it's a change in behavior of manic, energetic, aggressive, whatever that might be, right? Any change in behavior could be some that something is going on. Um, so whether someone was really social, um, but now they're very withdrawn in their office um, alone, they don't want to go to the break room with people, or if they were very passive before, and maybe they're more aggressive and outspoken now. But all of this stuff, right, could lead to something else. Um, fatigue, incompleting duties, um, do they look well rested, right? And we'll talk about how to approach these things and how to talk to somebody um, and voice that we're recognizing this stuff. Increasing number of absent days. And so that, of course, people have doctor's appointments, they have personal um, kids, right? People take off for a variety of reasons, but maybe it could be multiple different reasons. So it's maybe not consistent. Um, but again, this would come with another symptom or another something as well. So that could be paired with disinterest in work, loss of motivation and increasing number of absent days. Rarely are we gonna see just one of these things going on um, and link that to maybe mental health depression um, in that sense. So many times there's a handful of things going on. So we will talk about how to approach the situation and figure that out. Um, so we're gonna mainly talk about depression today. So when we go over these signs and symptoms on these next few slides, these are focused around depression. I know we're talking about mental health. A lot of this can be paired to um, other diagnoses, but this is kind of the main one because it's the most common. 
Uh, so feel free to bring up other ones if you would like to, but that is definitely the sole focus. Um, again, we're recognizing these signs and symptoms by physical, emotional, behavioral um, thoughts, things like that, because we're getting away from, we don't wanna diagnose people, right? We don't wanna come to work and say, our coworker has this, but more of signs and symptoms, because that's what we can do. We can recognize that and move that up the chain or move forward. So, and I'll just touch on a few of these because there's a lot on these slides. Um, mental health is a hard topic to squeeze into 20, 30 minutes. So um, I'll just touch on a few, but a lot of these physical symptoms can be a little intense, just reading through those. Um, of course, somebody's probably not gonna be having all of these. And again, I talked about when people have signs and symptoms of mental illness, depression, they'll often have more than one, but they can manifest in physical, um, symptoms. So if they are dizzy or have constant headaches, um, dry mouth, if they have muscle aches and pains, right? If that's the only thing they're saying is going on from a medical standpoint, we might just immediately go to, you know, mono or some physical illness, but then maybe asking those questions of what else is going on or for recognizing signs and symptoms that are emotional or behavioral while also physical. That's when you kind of jump the barrier of maybe this isn't just a physical medical issue maybe this is deeper maybe this is a mental health issue so could have a couple of these probably nobody is going to have all of these but again always err on the side of caution if someone does have a lot of these right we might have to get a nurse 911 things like that so always stay inside your scope stay within your profession you know um, abide by your buildings policies things like that when you're dealing with this kind of situation but pattern adjustments so we go back to behaviors and so overeating, not eating, sleeping is a big one, um, change in hygiene. When we talk about hygiene, um, we go back to that extreme and we talk about big behavior changes. So if they were very well kept before and now they're not, right? If they were sleeping very well before and now they are not, those big, big sudden changes, you know, why, what's different, what happened? Um, so they might be feeling extra tired, they might be working more slowly, but again, paired with other symptoms, um, but weight gain loss, um, of course this hormonal, right? We're not just gonna ask all of our coworkers necessarily these personal questions, but if they're open about that stuff and they're saying that, right? Then we can maybe piece that together with other symptoms that are going on um, and hopefully get some answers for sure. But so this are kind of our physical symptoms that you wanna watch out for. We'll start talking about emotions and so again, these are broken down in categories, but depression, of course, comes in mood, mood swings. That can be, everybody experiences depression, mental illness differently. And so everybody experiences signs and symptoms differently. So really, if you're working with people in the same building, hopefully you'll get a sense of who they are, what's normal for them, what's not normal for them, which makes it a little bit easier for us. You know, if this was a stranger, it might be a little harder to figure out what's their, what's their normal, what's their day-to-day -day look like. But we go down to unrealistic and excessive anxiety or guilt. And so this can really, this is easier to notice because it's more of unexplainable, right? Or over, we think about overreaction maybe, but maybe an overreaction that we can't explain um, or maybe over something that's not that intense. And so everybody else reacts maybe normally. And then maybe we have one coworker who's reacting in a completely different manner but can't really explain, right, why that they might be so sensitive to that. Um, so excessive anger, lack of inhibition, we talked about lack of motivation, right, working slowly, moving slowly, being late to work, missing deadlines, things like that, can show up in many different ways. Um, helplessness and hopelessness, those are always really big ones. Um, what comes with mental health and depression, there's always that risk for and concern about suicide. And so those feelings of helplessness or hopelessness can come out in, um, you know, feeling like a burden, basically. So, you know, people might be better off without me. You know, I'm just weighing down the team. You know, if you hear any of those phrases, any of those thoughts that are kind of, I've lost hope, um, there's no point going on, feeling trapped, anything like that, right? You definitely want to ask questions and you want to intervene. And I'll talk about that again in a little bit, but those are two really big emotions that we want to focus on and we do not want to ignore, for sure. But Oversensitivity to comments, criticism, again, that can be that instant anger um, or instant tears, um, maybe crying inconsolably. So um, maybe crying with no reason might be a big red flag that we wanna pay attention to. And then low self-esteem maybe just um, might be excessive negativity, 
And again, we talked about sudden behavior change. So if they didn't have maybe that negative, um, low confidence, negative self-talk before, and now they do, what has happened? You know, why, why now? What's different? So definitely touching on that. But this is, again, stuff we want to look for um, and maybe notice that something bad is going on. But again, everybody experiences it differently. Moving into behaviors, sleep problems is one of the biggest ones. I've mentioned that already. But crying spells, withdrawing from others. Not everybody withdraws, um, but most people will. We think, we talk about, if you look at some of these symptoms, um, the energy level, the lack of sleep, you know, if you have racing thoughts, whatever it might be, inability to manage your responsibilities, right? That can get overwhelming and stressful very quickly. And so someone might be isolated in the sense of, I need to deal with it, it's too much for me. And so most people do withdraw. Um, and maybe not just from their coworkers, but they might withdraw from their friends also, or their family, or, you know, um, if you notice big picture, right, depending on how we, close we are to our coworkers, but um, inability to manage responsibilities. This is a big one we're talking about um, in the workplace. And so if we don't recognize all of these signs, symptoms, and kind of put the dots together early, it can cause real problems. Um, think about rapport and um, teamwork and things like that. So Inability to manage your responsibilities can definitely snowball and cause issues. So that's again why we want to recognize this stuff early. But again, any sudden changes, so eating changes, um, if maybe they've accomplished nothing for the week because they weren't feeling well, um, again, right, that could happen if someone is sick or if someone, you know, has something going on, like a family member has died. It could be a million different personal reasons, but we don't know that, right? We never want to assume but we also don't want to intrude. So it's a hard fine line, but recognizing that that wouldn't be the only symptom, right? Remembering that they probably have other things, other signs, symptoms, what else have we noticed? What all are we concerned about? Um, the inability to concentrate, um, maybe having to repeat their work, that might be a really big one. Um, so that could be because they just can't focus or because they can't get motivated to maybe finish a project. So they're having to repeat work because maybe the project's taking longer. Um, but that can come up right in many different ways, but we definitely want to pay attention to that. Um, any kind of use of drugs and alcohol, again, if you know that that person doesn't use substances and now they do, or um, if they didn't used to go to um, the bar and maybe they have started going to the bar more often, if we recognize other signs and symptoms as well, definitely want to ask questions and intervene there for sure. Um, energy level, phobic behavior, obsessive, compulsive behavior, again, what's, odd, what's not normal for them. So if we have a coworker that's superstitious or um, is obsessive about certain things about um, maybe how, how much creamer they put in their sugar, you know, little things like that, that might be pretty normal for them. But if it starts snowballing into stuff that starts affecting their daily activities, so obsessed with something so much that it's affecting their work or they can't go to lunch or, you know, Things like that. When it starts interfering with their daily activities, that's when it's a real concern and maybe that there's something mental health, um, depression related going on. But any kind of distress, and that can come from hygiene, um, right? We can't manage our responsibilities, racing thoughts, whatever that might be. But we can normally tell, right, when someone is distressed or stressed out, our coworkers, our managers, um, our employees, whoever it might be. But that's pretty, um, pretty well shown most of the time. So going from behaviors, we're going to talk about thoughts and we're talking about mental health and depression. So this is the one that's really hard because we can't see all of this stuff. We can't see if our um, employees are struggling with odd ideas or rigid thinking. Um, if they don't tell us that they're having racing thoughts, we might not know that, that their mind is just spinning 24-7. Um, again, we talk about multiple different symptoms, right? So if they're having trouble sleeping, if they're having all of this other stuff, that might be coming from racing thoughts. So it's a little bit of, we have to ask questions, right? To find out this stuff because we can't see it. We can't, we don't know if someone's having delusions or hallucinations all the time. So it takes some conversation. It takes um, some interaction. We don't want to sit back. We don't want to let these conversations just naturally occur. And we don't want to just assume um, and pass judgment. We obviously don't want to do that. So in the workplace, most common, probably difficult making decisions, concentrating um, because of racing thoughts, rigid thinking, Rigid thinking is kind of those where you have blinders on, right? I only see one way. And so if other people are offering options or other suggestions, you might not even see that that's an option. Rigid thinking, think blinders. 
Um, so seeing oneself in a negative light, we talked about that negative self-talk, that low self-esteem. So expressing negative thoughts in general. And again, we go back to excessive is when we kind of need to be worried. And so of course we might have, you know, oh, it's snowing outside, like that's really sad. There's regular negativity, but then there might be excessive that you can't explain it or it's over the top, maybe negative, or it's starting to affect their work. It's starting to affect the employee rapport, the socializing, things like that. So negativity that's gone a little, a little far. Um, again, we go down to odd ideas, suspiciousness. Um, if you know the person or if you hopefully have a good sense of their normal or what they do every day, things like that, it'll be easy to pinpoint some of that stuff. But again, we have to ask questions to figure this out. Of course, this last one, thoughts of death and suicide, we want to take that very seriously. And so if you hear any comments about self-harm, um, suicide, people are writing about it, talking about it, posting about it, sharing things about it, um, really focused on someone else's um, maybe suicide, like can't stop talking about it, can't stop bringing it up, right? If they're thinking about it, then we need to ask questions and we need to maybe let somebody know. Um, but that's something we don't want to just brush off, right? We don't want to just brush that off with one question. We want to come back to that and we want to make sure that that gets addressed by either us, superiors, HR, whoever that might be. But we know that that's very serious. But again, I talked about earlier, maybe it's that helplessness, hopelessness comments, and maybe that feeling of being a burden um, or weighing people down. But manifest in different ways, but definitely serious. Um, so... We're talking about, these are all the signs and symptoms. Um, of course, there's more, everybody expresses them differently, but we really wanna focus on how we can help as employees, as coworkers, as supervisors, whoever you might be, but what can we do? Um, we don't all work in HR, but we there's a lot that we can do. We can recognize these signs and symptoms early and help people get help as early as they can. A lot of people go without treatment or seeking help for years. Um, and so sometimes it just takes those a few people to point it out. Um, most people don't know that they are maybe experiencing depression until people kind of bring it to their attention. Um, they might be in their own um, kind of thoughts thinking that nobody notices. And so when people start recognizing and realizing and pointing out, hey, I've noticed this, I'm concerned, or I've noticed this, this, and this, it might have someone step back and say, you know, maybe this is a bigger deal than I thought it originally was. So. This is the start to how we can help. So we wanna establish what's happening. I talked about we don't ever wanna assume, right? We're not trying to find out information from this person to gossip. That's not the goal of this. So we don't wanna um, assume anything and we don't wanna just brush it off as saying, um, you know, oh, I'm sure they have a lot going on personally and then just drop it, right? That might not be the best answer here um, because it is so common. But what we can do is we can keep communication lines open and so, even if we've expressed concern, if we approach them, if we ask questions and they don't want to talk, those simple statements of, you know, my door is always open, you can always come talk to me. You know, if you ever need to vent, I'm here for you. Those little um, lines of communication go a long way. If you're a manager or supervisor, maybe um, putting out there that one-on-one -on -one check ins um, would be appropriate, or, you know, feel free to check in with me once in a while, or a manager could set that up if there's a concern um, in your department or group about mental health issues. Um, you know, set up one-on-one -on -one check-ins with everybody, right? So then no one may be, um, pers or, yeah, pointed out or whoever it might be. Um, but you can focus on lots of things, right? Like goals, you know, just check in on everybody, short-term goals, long-term long -term goals, progress, um, you know, mental health, personal, whatever it might be. But that might be a really nice way to ease into that and take some pressure off of um, someone having to bring the conversation up out of nowhere. But the biggest takeaway is obviously like don't sit back. Most of the time this stuff doesn't come up on its own. Um, so if we're just sitting and waiting, thinking, well, something's going on, I'm sure they'll come talk to me if they wanna talk. That doesn't always happen like we want it to. And so we have to sometimes take the initiative. Um, a lot of times it might be more uncomfortable for the person approaching the person maybe struggling with depression, mental health, whatever it might be. Um, but most people want to talk about it at some point and with somebody. So whether, you know, if you put it out there, you start the conversation, you're concerned, they know that, hopefully they will reach out, hopefully they will engage with you. But we definitely don't want to sit back and just assume, oh, I'm sure HR will take care of it, or oh, you know, that's not my place. We want to pass on, hey, I've recognized these signs and symptoms, I'm concerned to somebody if we are not going to reach out, right? If we're not going to do it, 
we need to pass on that information so somebody in the department or in the building can approach that. Um, something to keep in mind with that though, we definitely don't want to maybe rely on third party information or secondhand descriptions of what's going on. So definitely focus on if we're thinking about, we need to tell somebody else, um, focus on behaviors that you have seen yourself. Um, we don't want to get in the whole, you know, well, so-and-so said or so-and-so saw. We want to be like, I've noticed this, I've seen this. Um, that's a lot more genuine and it might mean a whole lot more and go further. But just because they brush it off, right, that doesn't mean anything. Um, open that line of communication. If you don't want, that's fine. If you don't want to talk right now, um, you can always reach back in with me. So being mindful, so listening judgment, non-judgmentally, if you don't experience depression, mental health, um, if you're not struggling with anxiety or anything like that, it might be hard to understand maybe what someone's going through, but we, it's easy to be sarcastic and kind of laugh about things like that if you don't have experience with it, but you definitely have to be compassionate and you definitely want to have that um, base of compassion and I'm here to listen, I'm not here to judge. Um, if you ask somebody a question, right, and trying to help them and you're sarcastic or making jokes or, you know, a little judgy, things like that, or you put them down while asking the question, um, they're probably not going to respond like you would want. They might not um, engage as you had hoped, and that, that's not what we want. They might, that might shut them down and they might not open up to anybody else. So definitely want to be non-judgmental. We want to be compassionate for sure. Um, Reaching out, we want them to be less alone. And so socializing is a big part of that. So socializing can help people move forward. If anything, most people um, in this situation, if they really are struggling or distressed, they might cancel those plans and they might cancel often, but it will be some sort of accountability um, to them. And so they have to have reasons, right, why they're canceling. And it's still that even that is a little bit of socialization. So it's good. So keep socializing, right? Keep reaching out, keep trying. Um, but we definitely don't, we want to reel it in. We don't want to tell someone, right, that they are depressed or that they have mental health issues. So be respectful of that. We're not going in saying, you have this, I figured it out, right? We're not trying to do that. We're just trying to say our concerns, what we've noticed um, in that way. But um this is the biggest one, especially a lot of people, right? Preferred family is very helpful field, what we do. So it's very hard to reel them in because we can't fix everything. We can't fix them. So having realistic expectations about, you know, just because we're talking to them doesn't mean that they're gonna be fixed overnight uh, necessarily. So again, we're not trying to diagnose things like that, but this is a step um, in the right direction. It's a process, um, trying to get them in the right direction, get them the help they need. Um, get them to talk to somebody, whatever that might be, but have realistic expectations um, that mental illness and depression stuff, that stuff's not fixed overnight, right? That's a long-term um, recovery, long-term commitment. Um, but we're here, we wanna recognize concerns, signs and symptoms, we don't wanna diagnose and always fall back on resources. And so we can't fix them, right? It's not just on us. So what, what other resources, services are available? Are there resources in your building? Are the resources that you have discounts through, through HR? Um, if they are not ready for professional help, you know, you've come in, you've asked questions, all of this, um, offer this other help. If you don't wanna to talk to me, you know, these services are available, but if they don't want that, there's always self-help, right? And so a lot of times these books, like educating themselves about mental health, about depression, that can really, really help somebody. Um, we know exercise is proven to um, help mental health tremendously. But we can always suggest those things, put ideas out there. Even though we can't fix it, we can always help maybe guide people, give them ideas, do that part um, there. So this is kind of how you, this is the basic of how you would approach it. Um, you recognize signs and symptoms. We're focused on early intervention. We want people to get the help that they need. Um, so we wanna bring up their specific behaviors objectively, right? Not rude, not judgmentally. Observations and I statements. So. I've noticed that you haven't you've been late to work this week. I've noticed that you seem very tired. Um, I've noticed that you've been missing deadlines, right? That's a little less non-confrontational than you're not doing your job, you're slipping. Um, so be cautious of that, but stick to observations, I statements, and concerns, right? I've noticed, um, I'm concerned, uh, I've been seeing all kinds of things. I statements are bold in here, um, but why is it causing a problem? 
And this is hard, right? Because we have to reel it in. If we have let this manifest um, and it is starting to affect teamwork or deadlines or whatever it might be, it could already be causing a problem. So try and make sure that we don't put our emotions into this. If someone is struggling, right? It's about them, not us, as much as you know, it might be affecting us at the time. Um, this is a big, big deal in their lives. So be cautious of that. But explain potential business ramifications of the behavior, right? I'm concerned because I'm your friend and I want you to keep your job. You know, it could be simple, it could be whatever, know the relationship, know your scope, know what you're comfortable with talking to this person, but going back to listening and then give them a, an opportunity to address the behavior. So especially if you're in a managerial role, so giving them the opportunity to address it, um, recognize it, change behavior, um, that can go a long ways for people and whatever that policy or whatever your programs are set up like, obviously everybody's is different, but if anything, and then we're going to encourage appropriate help. So this is our part, right? If we're not a health, pro if we're not a professional where we can diagnose, if we are not a professional, you know, psychiatrist, psychologist, whatever that might be, counselor, um, HR staff focused on this, this is our part. Recognizing those signs and symptoms early, getting them the help they need and getting it in a certain direction, right? And hopefully doing our part so that they get help. That's the goal. Um, this is kind of, this is all taken from our mental health first aid classes um, and I'll just wrap up because I'm almost done and then I'm going to pass over to Trina but this is all taken from our mental health first aid classes um, we do those in the community we've done those for some preferred preferred family locations um, for their staff but it's really great and we expand on this um, a whole lot um, it's obviously a longer training it's a lot to cram into a short amount of time but I included the link in there and that'll be available um, during the recording as well but after we've done our part, express concern, ask questions, um, things like that, right? We want to go back to resources. So referring them to HR, um, knowing what we're comfortable with, and we want to keep um, their privacy. Um, we want to be respectful of that. We want to be respectful of, you know, where is, when is it crossing the line for us? If we're uncomfortable in the first place, right, you might, people are going to refer to resources sooner maybe than later or later sooner depending on who you are your relationship with the employee but always rely back on HR and additional resources surrounding you because that is their job right that help is there for a reason um, so if an employee expresses to you that they're struggling um, we can let them know about benefits resources available and so of course we're talking about the workplace that could be sick leave paid time off short-term disability um, any kind of medical business benefits or EAP, um, flexible work hours, but right, we're going back to maybe giving the employee the opportunity to correct behaviors. And so some of this stuff might make that doable and realistic for sure. Um, but if anything, if we don't feel like we're comfortable reaching out, let a supervisor know, let the person above you know, let somebody know that you're concerned and that you've noticed this stuff. So, um, we know depression is common, so we want to do what we can to help. But I think I think that was all I kind of had, and I am gonna pass it to Trina Goodnow, who is in HR, and she will talk about our EAP resources um, that Preferred Family offers. And if anybody has any questions, you can just post them in the chat box, and I'll do my best to respond. But I think I am done with my part. Great, thanks, Abby. Um, I think you're advancing my slides. So if you could skip down just a couple, that would be great. You did such a great job of just giving a good overview and some really practical tips on how to recognize uh, issues in the workplace. And so I just wanted to take a quick couple of minutes here at the end of this presentation to remind our staff of all of the practical resources that you can take advantage of here in the workplace either for yourself or maybe you're a manager, or even a coworker, um, you know, these are our benefits or resources that you, you need to keep in mind and um, they can be made available uh, to our eligible employees. And so the fir first and foremost, we want to talk about our EAP, our Employee Assistance Program. The EAP is automatically available to all full-time employees and their family members. You don't need to enroll or make any contributions. This is a company paid benefit, so no cost for employees to utilize these resources. Um, if you go online to gui guidanceresources.com, you can subscribe to their newsletter and, and have great articles and helpful tips sent right to your inbox. I would encourage you to go to the website, save it to your favorites or download the mobile app so that you can access these resources quickly in the future and they'll be there when you need them. 
Uh, In-person sessions, in addition to our online resources, eligible employees have three in-person visits with a counselor, and the program is available again for full-time employees and family members within the household, and you get three counseling sessions per issue per year. Meaning, for example, I could call today for three bereavement counseling sessions, then call a few months later to receive another three sessions for a separate issue like partner and relationship counseling. The toll-free number gives you direct 24-7 access to gui a guidance consultant who will answer your questions and, if needed, refer you to a counselor or other resources. So, again, the website is guidanceresources.com. The phone number is listed on the website as well. And in addition to uh, some of the in-person counseling, additional resources on our, our next slide um, shows confidential emotional support, including depression, stress, anxiety, grief, relationship conflicts, work-life solutions include finding child and elder care, planning events, or even moving and, and moving resources. Uh, there's some legal guidance as well for divorce, adoption, family law, trust, um, you can even get a 30-minute free consultation with an attorney, and then if you need to further use their services, they offer a 25% discount by going through the EAP. Uh, there's a lot of financial resources, and this is a great benefit to our employees. Uh, budgeting, taxes, mortgages, retirement, all those questions. You can even be reimbursed for the cost of an initial in-person financial consultation. There's help for new parents, preparing for parenting, finding childcare, planning for going back to work. And a lot of employees are taking advantage of, our, of the free online will preparation. If you don't have a will, I would encourage you to um, just make create a simple will for free through the EAP. Um, and then discounts on daily life activities. We have a whole page dedicated to employee discounts on our, our HR website, and many of them are through the EAP. Uh, discounted movie tickets, theme parks, hotels, car rentals, and shopping discounts. So that's kind of a fun little resource that the EAP offers as well. Um, moving on to our next benefit we want to mention, we are expanding our Teladoc services in 2020. You may have seen some emails go out about that. Uh, last year, you could just contact a physician um, for a cold or a sinus infection, those types of things. But now we've in increased it to offering mental health um, video or phone conferencing as well. So uh, keep that in mind. You do have to be on our UMR medical insurance because it runs through the medical insurance. Um, but it makes it really convenient, easy to use. There's extended hours. And again, you can speak to a, a counselor or therapist from the comfort of your own home or office. It's very cost effective. There's only a $15 copay per session if you're on the gold or silver plans. And keep in mind, if you're on the bronze plan, you will pay the full cost of that visit until you meet your $4,000 deductible. And then our next resource we wanted to, to mention is Right Direction for Me. Um, this is kind of something new that we'll be rolling out. So watch for um, more information to come on Right Direction for Me. It doesn't replace our EAP by any means, but it's an added benefit that we just want to bring awareness to. Its purpose is to break down the stigma associated with mental health concerns in the workplace. And again, it's just another tool to assist you with mental health well-being. And um, on the next slide, this is just showing some of Abby's resources uh, that may be helpful to you if you want to go check those out. Again, we're posting these slides on our website after this call, so you can uh, review these slides there at that time. Um, and I know we're a little bit over time, so if you have to hop off the call, we understand. But we did want to just stick around for a few extra minutes um, and take any questions you might have. Uh, so you can unmute yourself and ask those questions, or you can put them in the chat, chat box as well. That's, that's going to happen. Thank you. Um, Hi. Good morning. Good morning. I just wanted to let everybody know. Let me get you scheduled first, and then I'll double check. I will go I ahead and have, it. Um, have you just submit your question in the chat? Yeah, I was seeing that out. My I'll go ahead and have you submit the question in the chat, I think, um, or if you can unmute yourself, like Trina said, that would be great. Or if you want to just um, 
feel free to reach out to Trina or to Abby as well if you have additional questions that you wanted to ask them but did not want to ask them during um, the course of the webinar, feel free to do so as well. And Abby and Trina, um, do you have any additional comments that you would like to uh, to share with the rest of the group? I have uh, both of you unmuted. No, sorry, I ran a little over. It's hard to. That's okay. We appreciate both of you uh, sharing the information and your time. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I'm not seeing any additional questions um, in the chat box when we unmuted everybody all at the same time. We had a lot of background noise. So again, um, if, if you have any additional questions, um, please feel free to reach out to Abby. You can also uh, reach out to, to me and I can connect you with one of them. Somebody did just ask about um, the link for the recording. It'll be sent out. Yes, it will. I will place that on the employee wellness website uh, in the resources section. So that will be um, available to everyone. So you can listen again or please feel free to share with those that maybe were not able to attend. Well, we're going to go ahead and um, wrap things up. Thanks again to everyone who participated. Thank you, Trina, for your time. Thank you, Abby, for your time and expertise. We um, appreciate everything that all of you um, do for PFH and uh, appreciate everyone supporting our initiatives related to mental wellness in the workplace. Thank you very much and have a great day. Thanks.